There's an image. Uh, no there's an image in my my mind, uh, iconic about you. Uh, here you are, uh, uh, decades uh, of a long career, a, a good career, a wonderful career. You've given us voice, and there you are in Vienna shooting uh, uh, Pillars of the Earth. Not to dwell on that, with large hats and good costumes. And what are you doing? You're writing a script in your spare time. <laughs> yeah. And the script is about Newfoundland. That's um, a potent image for me, that that's the work you're given at that pinnacle of your career, and here you are still writing another script. Was it produced, the Newfoundland script? And it was produced, yeah, yeah. Well, that was the easy down easy. Easy down yeah. easy, okay. Barry Walsh directed it. I sat in for three or four days while they were working it out, and she says, uh, Gordon, she said, I was thinking, I'd like to go for the, for the juggler on it. I want to go from A to Z, faster, in the piece. I want to see that. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'll put some of your other stuff to one side. And I, I'm sorry. I, I write good words, baby. I don't know. No, so I didn't bother too much with it. I said, do what you have to do. Well, she had it down to almost a, to like a, a long one actor. And she said, I want it like a train. I want it to move. So when it came on opening night, I said, well, I love your train, but I'd like to have dinner on it. <laughs> I have so much more material that I'd like to put back into it. So if you don't mind, I'll finesse it into an, arra you know, an arranged uh, state where I can get it to other theaters otherwise. So that's one of the things I'm doing now. But we got on famously. It was all good. I mean, you know, really. So, yes, that was great fun. Had a laptop, had plenty of space, found myself nooks over there and just did this thing. I'd never done the laptop before. So, yes, I started to... Uh, that was something I used to do. And, and if I was on a film and I'd go into the trailer, I'd spend more time thinking about the things than I would on the show I was on. I did that a lot. Sounds awful, but I did. Well, that belies a confidence in you, though. I would never have the confidence to be in my trailer not thinking about the next scene or the next day's shooting or the next week's scene. I wouldn't have the confidence. But there you are in your trailer going, well, yeah, I'll think about something else. <laughs> I never had that. I used to feel so good when I got home because I'd have page, a few pages of stuff that I can now put into the computer, you know. Of, there's another image that I want to talk about briefly. It's another script of yours called The Hag. Oh, yes. Now, The Hag is a script that I read, thought, because it's Martin's a Hag, piece. yes. Martin's Hag. And the central image of this is a large demon or small demon sitting on one's chest. That's right. And. Yes. Where's that from, Gordon? That comes from, well, in medieval times, the belief of a creature or of a, well, depression comes from depression. And you once said to me, as a matter of fact, when we talked about the idea or whatever, and you said, that's, <laughs> that's a terrific, heavy thing on depression. Um, and that's what it is. It comes from, uh, they, they go by different names in, in European history, medieval times, they believed that, uh, for religious reasons and whatever, that something something was there, something that would haunt us and frighten us into heaven or hell or whatever. But um, England England said once in the paper, and in Newfoundland they call it the old hag, and the old hag. I I mentioned it to somebody the other day, a teacher. I said, now if I'm really getting getting to a point where I really enjoy this. This is the best draft I've done of this particular piece. I've called it Martin's Hag, an androgynous creature that comes and sits on your chest to choke you or smother you into uh, between, between sleeping and waking, in that sleeve of time between sleeping and waking. In Newfoundland, she is well known as the old hag. That's the title. Um, she goes by, and it goes by many other names throughout history, so on. And we can include those of us who have felt depression. Uh, the, the black dog, as we call it, can, uh, we, you know, we can include historian, history people all over. 
you know, Churchill, Nijinsky, and, you know, uh, Lord Byron, Hitler, all sorts of people, wonderful people with, uh, and terrible people with, with the hag. And if I meet a Newfoundlander today, for example, who may not have been home for 50 years, he'll say, I had the hag last night, you know. So it's just something that happens, and it can be very, 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 very rough. So I've simply written here in as a mixture of creatures that appear in different forms to sit on this man and stay sitting on him forever and ever, and, uh, and it has to do with his escape of that. One of the m most, one of the more memorable moments in my life was in Ottawa with you. Uh, we were lobbying for something, mm -hmm. and then we went to the, the, the listen to question period, and we're all sitting in the gallery, whatever, 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 and then we had to leave for another meeting, so we're all filing out quietly. And as you were approaching the door and I was beside you, someone on the floor of the house got up and said, I want to acknowledge Gordon Pinson. And the whole house, except for the Parti Québécois, uh, the whole house, the Bloc Québécois, uh, the whole house stood up in astounding ovation to you. And that was a, a remarkable moment, for both for my feelings for you, but the fact that the, the government or the House of Commons would actually stand up and acknowledge spontaneously an artist. This is a rare event in Canada, and it was a, a kind of pinnacle of what you can do. But on the other hand, there is the, the grind and the fact that we fought for, well, I've only been around for 30 years in the profession, you've been around longer. We haven't actually created the kind of utopia of arts that we wanted to create. Yeah. You know, we're mired, and there you have 27 scripts of which four have been produced. Yeah. Uh, you know, there you're, you know, you're off to do a, a big hat part in, in Pillars of the Earth, but I mean, major artists, whether it's Karen Kane or yourself, don't have place of, I wish we were France. You know what I mean? Yes. So yes. I'm having a hard time putting the fact that, y you know, you go from away from her and then maybe it's five years later that you get Pillars of the Earth and I go, wait a minute, this is Gordon, this is Gordon Pinson. Yeah. We don't have many of him. I mean, look at his, you know, his, his craft, his stature. I was talking to Plummer before, uh, before I went over there and I said, he said, what are you doing next? I said, uh, well, apparently I'm doing the <laughs> Archbishop of Canterbury. He said, do it in a mitre, only with the mitre on, nothing else. So <laughs> that's a bit of a shock. I would not know. I, I must be clothed. And did you have a big hat? I had a, at one point I, I had one, yes. And how do you feel about big hats? Big hats? Yeah. I, uh, I like them. I like them, yes. That, that's, uh, if there's a big idea that goes with it, you know, big re or maybe no reason at all to, to wear them, but I like them. I think I've heard that some people have big hats, right? Yeah, I think they do. I think it's important, most actors. What do you uh, got back there? Oh, hello. Come on, put on your big Oh, hat. so I have one too. We're talking about acting. Right? Isn't this grand? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, is this a secret to acting? Matter. Look, right? Is this a secret to acting? Is it? <laughs> well, I'm a character, right? Now I don't have to do it. Yes, anything. that's right. That's right. There you are. Yeah, and you look like some... You're you off Lord Nelson's thing, and you find yourself in Mexico. Look. Right <laughs> <laughs> word this way. I love... Oh, this is... Oh, oh, that's Hornblower. I've changed character. That's Horatio Hornblower. So today I've learned the one, two, three, and I've learned change my hat. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you, Alain, I think you've heard this too. It's another acting kind of thing. I don't know. I've said it and I've said it over and over, but only because I had it on the fridge for quite a while. But I was in Winnipeg. Would you like me to take my hat off now? No. <laughs> yes, you're going to take your hat off. As I'm you wait, wish. I'm waiting for Karsh. Yes. <laughs> uh, that uh, Rejection, you know, the thing of rejection and so on. And uh, the thing of saying I've always wanted to I've always had a resource. Oh, I've been able to count on myself. So not, it sounds as though I would never be disappointed completely. But 
I have been on occasion because rejection sometimes hurts. And I was out in Winnipeg and I had written a small play and I acted in it. And I was coming home for the first time, that home, for the first time at that theater and got a bad review. Bad review from uh, both papers, the press and the trib. And I, th I was really quite hurt by it. I thought it never would be again because as you know, I got older, I thought maybe that would. But anyway, and I went down the second night, and, and I don't know how you feel about the second night, but I find it's just murder if you've had a bad review. <laughs> and uh, I've been very lucky in Winnipeg. I've had a bit of a following and so on. But there was a message in the makeup uh, mirror uh, brought by someone from a bedridden old lady who lived in the country who used to go to see all the theater, different things. And the message, obviously she had read the papers and said, never mind Gordon, high station in life is earned by the gallantry with which appalling experiences are survived with grace. Oh my God. Isn't that dear? High station is earned by life. High station in life is earned by the gallantry with which appalling experiences are survived with grace. And it's, it was a lovely feeling. And I went on that night, and I was just as bad as I was the night before, but, <laughs> 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 but I didn't hurt myself over it. Is that, does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we've all been in those where well, I've been in those and that where I know I'm bad, and I know I can do nothing but be bad, <laughs> I, and I, I have know. to keep on doing it for weeks. Yes. Man, that's a particular hell that only an actor knows, maybe. I know. I put, it, I put it on the fridge next to another little one from a reviewer in Toronto in the, uh, at the time. And the review, and, they, and they, the, the idea was, never wrestle with pigs. You both get dirty, and the pigs love it. <laughs> so it uh, and did you get better in that performance? No, no. 